in previous lessons in this course, you've gotten a taste of the various stitch types and learned how to set up your environment. In this lesson, we'll take a look at tools and techniques for manual cross-stitch digitizing. Although we're using different kinds of stitches and the interface is different, the actual process for digitizing in hatch cross-stitch is similar to that of hatch embroidery. For example, we'll start by deciding whether we want an outline or a fill. Then we'll select a stitch type, we'll choose a color, and we'll pick a tool to apply the stitches. Also like hatch embroidery, we can use an image backdrop or work without one. If we do use an image, it should be sized and adjusted before adding stitches because in hatch cross stitch, we're working with stitches, not objects. Design size is controlled by fabric count and how many stitches we use. In this lesson, we'll just get familiar with how to use the stitches in the tools. So I'm going to scroll down a bit and I'm going to make sure I have fill selected and I'm going to right click on the cross stitch there that's selected and pop open my select stitch palette. And it's already positioned up here because that's where I like to put it. And I'm going to do the same thing with the colors. I'll right click on that color swatch and it puts the thread colors up there. This makes them easy to select. So I want to start by making an outline and I'll click the outline tool and I have a choice of either single line, which are just straight stitches like this, or whatever the current cross type is. And currently the current cross type is full cross, which is the full X, and it would look like this. I'm going to leave it at the red color and now I need to pick a tool to apply it. I could use the pencil tool, I could use the open curve tool, which is like the open shape tool in Hatch Embroidery, the closed curve, which is like the closed shape tool, a circle or oval, or a rectangle. So I'm going to use the rectangle, and I'll just drag out a rectangle. And notice where I'm dragging those lines. I'm going to click, and now it's out of the outlines. But it didn't put them right where my rectangle was. It snaps them to the closest grid line. So outlines are always going to step either to a line or go diagonally across a square. You can't go diagonally across two squares. It's always going to go diagonally across one square in one direction or the other, or it's going to snap to the closest outline. If I hold down the control key, it will constrain my rectangle to a perfect square. You have to hold the control key down until you finish creating the shape. Now let's do one with the current cross type. Right now, current cross type is full cross. I'll pick a different color. I'll pick light blue and I'll just make a rectangle. Once again, our stitches are snapped to the closest full square. Circle works similarly. Click in the center, drag out, click for the perimeter, press enter. So if you made circles in Hatch and Brody, we make circles the same way here. They're, they just might not be as circular because of our cross stitches. I want an oval, and I want it to be single line. I just make my adjustments, and there we have that. Now if I want a different stitch type, I'll pick current cross, I'll pick a color, and I'll pick a stitch type. Let's pick this one. Select my rectangle tool, make my rectangle. Now it's going to ask me, where do I want the quadrants to be filled? And what we're looking for is where do we want this little short piece to go? And I'll say that I want it there. And I just need to click the corner where I want it. I'll click OK, and there's my new outline. The Close Curve tool works just like the Digitize Close Shape in Hatch Embroidery, and we'll use left and right mouse clicks to digitize our shape. When you're one click from the end, just click enter. Ask me again, maybe I'll change it to there. Do that. I want the open curve. I'm doing left clicks, but I can also do right clicks. So I'll do right click, right click, right click, enter. And there's that shape. To use the pencil tool, select the pencil, select a stitch type, I can do outline or current cross stitch type. Let's do, let's do this one. If I hold down the control key, it will constrain the stitches so that they are just vertical. 
Notice how it makes kind of an interesting pattern here. If I just click at the squares, I get separate little stitches. But when I drag, it wants to connect them. So when you use the pencil tool with a fractional stitch, it's not going to ask you what corner to put it in. You have to decide by clicking there. So if I click there, 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 and there, I have that. I could click like this. So you can see you can get some really interesting patterns by combining these different stitch types. Here you can see a variety of patterns you can make with the various stitch types. Now when you have a stitch that fills up the whole square, you can only put one stitch in there. So that would be the full cross stitch, the upright cross, the double cross, and the French knot. Some of these other ones, we can combine stitches. So let's see how that works. So I'll start with one of these. I'll put that there. Oops, got to select the pencil. If stitches aren't happening, make sure you have a tool selected. I'll select a different color, and I'll use the quarter stitch, the quarter cross, and I'll just put that one up there in the corner. I could also put one of these in there. Let's make that orange. But if I put another stitch on top of that one that would cover that up, it will replace it with the new stitch. Before I do that, let's do a mini cross. See if we can add one of those. And I'll do this lime green and just put it down here in the corner. So you can get some interesting combinations. Now if I put another stitch on top of that, we'll do the upright cross, and I'll pick this kind of purple color, and I'll click in that square. It replaced all those stitches in there with this one stitch. So you're not going to get stacked up stitches. You can get bulk if you have your thread count set to six. It's going to add bulk, but you can't put stitches on top of stitches. So when you overlap objects, whatever was on top is going to replace whatever's on the bottom. So by combining different stitch types, you can get some pretty interesting designs, even really simple ones like this one. So I know you've seen this one before, but look at the different ways that you can get different patterns by combining these different stitch types. So I suggest you just kind of make a little stitch sampler and play around with this. So if you're using the pencil tool and you put a stitch in a place where you don't want it, you can just right click to delete it. If the stitch is the wrong color, you can just select a new color and stitch on top of it. If it's the wrong stitch type, pick the different stitch and replace it that way. So if you're trying to add stitches and nothing is happening, make sure you have a tool selected over here. Make sure you have an appropriate stitch type selected down here and make sure you're in design mode. You cannot add stitches in picture mode. We can't even see the stitches in picture mode. We'll only see our picture. As you can see, the tools in here are so easy to use. You'll have tons of fun creating your own designs with Hatch Cross Stitch. In the next lesson, we'll look at automatic tools for adding stitches.